Hi, this is your host Avlim Bhartia and welcome to a brand new episode of our series TFIR topic of the month aka T3M and this month's topic is platform engineering is DevOps there and my guest today is Kit Merker, Chief Growth Officer at Noble9. Kit, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be here. Yeah, and today's discussion, as you know, is about platform engineering is DevOps dead. Uh, before we jump into this discussion, what I would like to hear from you is that what kind of cultural or organizational restructuring you are seeing within organization when it comes to discipline like DevOps, SRE, platform engineering? Yeah, I would say um, a few things on this. You know, in terms of the org structure, you know, there's a few different uh, modes on the spectrum. One is, you know, rebranding, right? You take an IT ops team and you kind of rename the SREs and uh, probably have to give everybody a raise if you do that. Um, but there, there is a lot of that that I've seen where people say, you know, let's rename the team. And by the way, naming is an important part, right? It helps define the roles and clarifies um, an approach and gives people some context about what you're trying to do. So that that's one side of it. I've seen quite a few teams that are that are hiring, um, you know, reliability engineers, you know, SREs, production engineers, etc. From the big, uh, how do you say it now? It's is it Fang companies? It's now uh, Mang. I don't know, but you know, from from Meta, from Google, from you know Apple, they're bringing these these folks in that have experience in large scale uh, teams and trying to bring that to enterprises. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of teams building platform engineering uh, groups. And platform engineering, I think, is uh, really a powerful move. I've seen quite a few SREs, actually, even where companies have gone through the evolution of saying, OK, we're going to have a DevOps or a cloud engineering team. Then they move to SRE, and then they're moving to platform engineering. Um, and I don't know that it changes the work, to be honest, but I do think it changes um, the interfaces and the ownership. I think that's really the key the key difference in these uh, organizations. I think one of the risks uh, in building an SRE team is that you you might uh, end up doing a lot of DIY engineering projects. And I think there's a lot of hesitancy around that right now in early 2023, where we sit with a lot of economic uncertainty and headcount uncertainty. Um, you know, doing DIY is probably not the most uh, effective uh, approach right now. But uh, there's a perception, I think, amongst engineers that if you don't build uh, infrastructure, that you you know you're not going to be able to get ahead in your career. And so that's something that I think people have to to counteract. So that's that's another thing I've seen. But there's a lot of interesting models, like embedded SRE teams versus centralized teams. Um, I've seen quite a quite a few companies, especially larger enterprises, that build um, they build sort of cross company. Uh, groups where they'll have like guilds or or other kinds of um, reliability focused virtual teams, and I've seen that be really effective because uh, you don't really have to do much to build you know in terms of org structure. It's not political. It becomes really more about learning and sharing um, ideas and practices, which I think is a really great place to start because I think you know jumping to org structure is always like uh, a little bit uh, chaotic, right? A little bit risky. Yeah. I would also like to uh, hear from you that uh, because definitions, as you said, you know, the labels are important. How would you define platform engineering and how different if it is from DevOps or say SREs or they actually overlap? These are just labels. I would say that the skill set and the um, the sort of uh, mindset is actually pretty similar, right? It's people who are concerned with not uh, all the things around the product and not the product itself, right? So it's it's the illities, if you will, right? Reliability, security, scalability, et cetera. And, um, and that can come in different in different forms. It can be a consultative kind of view. And I think a lot of SREs take that mindset where it's like, oh, look, I'm going to help the team out. We're going to be a first line of defense. We're going to help them um, measure and improve. DevOps, you know, tends to, you know, do the work uh, sometimes uh, as part of the team, sometimes, again, centralized, depends. Um, and then the platform, uh, platform engineering, at least the way I've seen it done, is generally building a platform. They're building something that then they have internal customers that they're using it. So it's kind of like different approaches or even different degrees to you know how self serve is it, how um, consistent is it, what is the thing that they're responsible for or that they own, um, and is that you know is that a concept or is that a system? And if it's a concept, then you know it's like okay, I'm going to be responsible for reliability. Well, what does that mean? I have to now define that uh, set of practices and, and tools and outcomes, um, as opposed to a platform where you take the repeatable services that everybody inside of your company requires, um, which they may like, you know, may be able to get from a cloud provider, uh, but more likely they're going to need to, you know, hook together multiple systems. 
uh, with some configuration, some consistency, and that'll give you everything from, you know, compute, network, storage, database, identity, observability, et cetera, et cetera, as a part of a, a platform. And hopefully, you know, obviously some, some metrics and goals around that, some service level objectives or whatever, but something that is a, a running system that other teams internally can leverage to build and deliver uh, th- whatever software they're building. That, that to me is really what a platform engineering team is that's, that's different. Um, and the SRE approach is much more focused on how do we improve reliability? How do we measure reliability? And I would say DevOps is much more about you know, how do we take responsibility for whatever goes wrong, right? How do we make sure that all the things um, that need to be done to deliver the product are done in an appropriate way? We do hear, you know, that, hey, DevOps is dead, now the time for something else. From, as you said, no, these things really, I want to hear your opinion, is, is DevOps really dead? I don't think I don't think it can die. I mean, it's it's kind of funny. I think it catches headlines and people kind of latched onto it. But um, I don't see a reason for it to die. To be honest, I think DevOps has been a a rallying cry for a lot of people who are trying to find you know their role. And we've seen the evolution in in tooling, which is, I think is also an evolution in in kind of technical competency or even technical literacy. You know, as we're now moving to a mode of low code, no code, you know, I mean, hearing about prompt ops, which I think is the, the, the silliest one so far I've seen. But, you know, we've got Copilot and, and other kinds of tools that are really reducing the barrier to entry for uh, technical uh, contributors. Right. And, uh, you know, it's not to eliminate engineering or, or development. In fact, I think to the contrary, right, more and more of our life is, is dependent on digital uh, information. But what we found is that there's patterns and tools that make it easier to do that. And so what I see happening more likely is that the DevOps mindset is going to be applied to more domains. Like I think in the ML ops space, for example, machine learning, uh, you know, data scientists need a lot of help with their DevOps. That's something I've heard all over the place that uh, ML teams still don't really have a good delivery model for how they're going to put their um, their models and, and, and data to production. So I, I would see it in some ways it's growing. And I think in some ways to declaring it dead may even be uh, revitalizing, right? So that's maybe it's a good thing. Yeah, you also touched uh, briefly uh, in our discussion previously is the importance of developer experience in today's, you know, uh, first of all, once again, how would you define developer experience? What is the importance and where does it fit in, you know, the platform engineering aspect? Yeah, defining developer experience is actually, it's an interesting question because um, it's one of those things you kind of know it when you see it. But developers get frustrated when um, they have to go through sort of consumery types of experiences to do what they want. And developers are trying to automate. I mean, this is really what it comes down to. Rather than manually doing something they want to automate. So the question becomes, how do you make that easy for people? And so you want to have uh, simple APIs, you want to have command line tools, you want to make it uh, fit into their developer workflow. You want to make it so you can persist configuration as code. Um, you don't want to have any sort of you know unintended side effects. Uh, you want to be transparent about versions. You know those kinds of things are all part of that developer experience. And um, you know when it's when it's not there, when people try to like hide complexity to make it easier, uh, they end up with the, the unintended side effect of making the developer experience worse. Right? It actually can be. Um, uh, antithetical to making a good UX, right? We think about a good UX uh, for consumer hiding a lot of the complexity and guiding them down a path, uh, which for a developer, you know, it's like the difference between giving them, you know, uh, a Lego set with instructions versus giving them, you know, a set of tools so they can go build, you know, can go construct something for themselves, right? It's a very different uh, way of looking at the world. Um, we have reusable components so you can bring together to, to build stuff. Where does developer experience fit into the when we talk about platform engineering? If you think about a platform uh, that you've built for your developers internally, right, you have to give them a developer experience. And you can kind of think of this as like a, you know, a, a set of reusable components, but you want to give them clarity about the constraints of that system. If they're trying to build a highly reliable, um, you know, high performance uh, a service of some sort on top of your platform, and you haven't clarified for them what the reliability targets or the performance targets will be for that service and given them a way to provide feedback about that, uh, you're going to run into trouble, right? And this is, you know, it's, it's part of developer experience, but it's also just like engineering constraints, 
right? I'm trying to build something. You told me I'm supposed to use this platform and the platform doesn't give me what I want. How do we have that conversation? And then more importantly, how do we have that conversation at scale, right? Because we don't actually want to have the conversation. Let's be honest. We want to have pull requests. We want to move our meetings into pull requests and APIs, okay? If you're a developer, that's really what you want to do. How do I reduce the meetings and move it into uh, this more productive mindset where we're working on the system as opposed to talking about the system, right? And I think this is maybe one of the missing pieces of truly building a strong developer experience um, is is making it so that that is incredibly transparent. People see the interfaces and the boundaries of the service, and they have a platform where they can um, they're not constrained, but they're enhanced. So you might have um, you know you know three databases that you offer as part of your platform, and some team truly absolutely needs a fourth type of database. Uh, you know, do you tell them to wedge it into your platform, or do you let them go and do it themselves? Well, if they go and do it themselves, they need to take responsibility for reliability, performance, monitoring, and all these other things that the platform provides. And if not, then you know you do it as part of the platform. And this is the kinds of decisions you have to make as a platform team. You have to decide you know, what's good for the vast majority, and then where do we handle exceptions? What kind of you know, rules of the road can we give our team so that they can be productive? Um, and this is, I think, one of the challenges of, of that is it does require judgment. right? You have to think hard about these kinds of problems. You don't necessarily want to be on the far end of the spectrum, like, you know, which Google kind of is, which is like, you know, there's one way to do everything and everyone will do it that one way. Um, but on the same time, you don't want it to be a complete, you know, chaos, uh, you know, free for all, uh, where everybody gets to pick their own things. So that, that there's a balancing act there for sure. Um, but I think generally speaking, you kind of go with the 80, 20 rule. So, yeah. Kit, thank you so much for talking about this topic today. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thanks so much.